Yes, today is turning out to be another edge of your seat nail biter as both of these teams vie to move another step closer to the 100th Grey Cup Championship. And what may be the best part, the fan videos people are making in the hopes of winning free tickets for this year's cup. Oh! oh man, some oh. guys should never take their shirts off, dude. That's gross. Hey. Oh, that's nice. You know, you could do that with a football. Who are these crazy people? Ooh. I mean, I can't blame them, man. Grey Cup 100. We should have made a video. Yeah. We totally won. We get tickets to the game. Some kind of Chris Angel, David Blaine mind reading thing. Yeah, IAB would love that, huh? Yeah. I think we'll be sitting here on the couch. Oh, man, I got to bounce. What do you mean? Come on, it's half time. We got half a pie left. Hey, what can I say? Sandy's a better kisser than you are. I imagine. Look, we only get the same night off once a week. We're just going to fit in a little date before my graveyard shift. That's okay, right? All your bliss. You sure? Never float your butt. Okay, Toby. Get some sleep. Sweet Toby. Weird, man. I got the cheerleaders. I'm okay. Cheerleaders aren't real. It's all pretend. Anyway, go. Say hello to Sandy. One day you'll find someone. One day, Toby. Hello, this is Franca Burroughs. Happy office warming. You're more than welcome. Everything's in order, I hope. I'm afraid I won't be able to join you this evening. Something has come up. <laughs> exactly, no rest for the wicked. But listen, I really am counting on your support for the Children First benefit next week. Great. Well, listen, don't hesitate to get a hold of me if you need anything. Okay? Take care. Bye-bye. Excuse me. Excuse me, thanks. Hey there. All right. Come on. Hey. Good, I'm glad you're here. Yeah, I'm the chief of police. This must be someone important. Yeah, well, let's just say the victims in case of emergency contact is the Minister of Justice. Whoa! Her name is Frank Burroughs. Burroughs is in the opera theater? Yeah, in the arts center, the sports teams, the mobile phone empire, all founded by her husband, Kyle Burroughs. Supposedly, they were the perfect couple. Her father was a senator. Both of her parents passed away, leaving her six generations of very old money. She parlayed her inheritance into a successful real estate firm of her own. A real Upper Canada aristocrat. Whoever killed her tried to make it look like a robbery gone wrong, her purse is missing. Yeah, but not her $600 phone or her luxury car. She was strangled with some kind of rope, not really a mugger's weapon of choice. It wasn't easy either. Frank could put up a fight. Hopefully forensics can pull the DNA. Messy. Public. The killer wasn't a pro, but he thought about this. Our canvas puts her at a bistro down the street. Her waiter says that she and a male companion argued. She walked out. All right, do we have a description on this guy? Yeah, we do, but it's not a match for the husband. Whom we're still having trouble reaching. So how about her phone? Anything on that? Well, it was still receiving calls and texts when we got here. Yeah, people wondering where she was. She had plans. We sent it to Dev to check it out. Let's find out where he's at with that. Dev. Yeah, any luck raising Kyle Burroughs? Uh, his cell's off, there's no reply at home, and his office is closed. But there's nothing from him in her recent messages that I can see. What about next of kin? There's no living blood relatives, no kids. Franka's husband was all she had. Any leads on this guy at the bistro? No, but there was a pretty hostile text exchange. It was about an hour before the murder. From someone named Lucy. It was something about Franka leaving. No death threats, but I gotta say, these ladies were not in a good place. Can you identify her, track her down? Her geotagging's off, but I think I could trace her old school. Just give me a second. No luck finding bros. Prominent people with money and influence. Maybe someone was after them both. Okay, I got it. Franca's BBM hater was uh, Lucy Estevez. It was her partner in a real estate firm. All right, break the news in confidence to her dev and bring her in for a little chat. Well, he found her business partner. We don't want girls finding out about this on the news. Whoa, whoa, what the hell are you doing here? Oh, come on! I just hope Fox 6 of Toronto's finest for this. That's Franca Burroughs, isn't it? All right, look, what are you, a reporter? Mind reader. <laughs> With the police scanner in my car, Tia Tremblay, crime desk, daily record. This is the part where I need to confirm, no deny, etc. What so if I have a hot tip that could blow this thing wide open for you? What the hell is she doing in here? Well, Mr. Klein, Tia Tremblay for the daily record. I'm a big fan. Show her the way out. 
So much for the freedom of the press. The victim's husband doesn't even know she's dead yet. Back off. But heaven forbid I miss your photo up at the perp walk. Come on. Did you say anything to her? No. Good. Blacks like that'll do anything to make the front page. Hey, Oz. Who do we have here? Huh. He looks exactly like Glenn Suter. Who? TSN. Oh, my God. 89 great cop? Rider pride. Yeah, he got blindsided by 600 pounds of Argonaut defensive line. No broken bones, but I, I gave him a little something for the pain. We get that on camera. I'd like to see a replay of that hit. Yeah, he's made that joke a few times already. Well, he's stable, so let's get him a CT and X-ray. Okay, coming up. Thank you. Oz, what? you just saved a Grey Cup champion's life. Yeah, you know, he's got to take it one day at a time, do it for the team, leave it all on the field. It's gut check time. You done? Home run. This is a swish. Thanks, coach. OK, I got it. Kyle's on the red eye. We'll be waiting for him at his house when he gets there. I'm sorry. I can't believe this is real. I should wake up from this. She'll call. It'll be a bad dream. When was the last time that you spoke with Frank? Oh, we were texting last night. Right up until the murder. I thought she was giving me the silent treatment. What exactly were the two of you fighting about? Nothing. It was stupid. Work. According to your text message conversation, she said, leave me alone, I've had it. I'm out. And then you said, if you screw with me on this, you're done. I mean, the rest of the conversation, it doesn't get any better. It was about a job. We were both exhausted and losing it a bit. <sighs> Look, we've been friends since kindergarten. Franca, she was a little sister I never had. No secrets, no punches pulled. I loved that about us, and so did she. Really? Because it sounds like Frank was ready to end your partnership. Idle threats on both sides. We were invited to bid on a waterfront development. I wanted it, and she felt it was anti-environment. And how did the two of you usually resolve these disagreements? A long weekend at a spa. <sighs> we always work things out. My head for business and her big, sweet, bleeding heart. Oh my god, we're a great team. She had her inheritance to fall back on. You needed this business to work. The company was her baby. Franca was the name, she was the draw. I was just lucky to be a part of it. I had no incentive to want her dead, if that's what you're implying. Do you know anyone who did? Where was she? The distiller district. I had this feeling that she started seeing someone who lived in that area. What, like an affair? Did you have a name? I wouldn't. Franca was the soul of discretion. Do you think that her husband could have known something about this? Kyle works as hard as she does. Look, if she was cheating on him, it would have been out of loneliness. They barely saw one another. They were both so busy. OK. Thank you. We're very sorry for your loss, Mr. Burroughs. Franco was like Lady Di. People adored her. How do I make sense of this? Well, the first thing we can do is find whoever's responsible for this. Yes. Sorry. How can I be about? Did Franca have any enemies? Any business rivals? Someone who was upset by a property deal? Not that I was aware of. Well, how about any personal issues? Hey, money and fame don't tend to bring out the best in people. We were happy and healthy. In love. We had everything we wanted from life each other. So there was no outside romantic interests? What are you saying? Our marriage was very strong. Uh, Franca was meeting someone for dinner close to where she was killed. Do you know who she was meeting? Um, Franca worked day and night on top of her charities. We were both so busy, I, I admit, I, I don't know her schedule. I, I've been away. Oh, yeah, that's right. Where were you exactly? Newfoundland. I was in transit most of the night. Well, we'll be in touch if we have any more information. Again, we're very sorry for your loss. Just get the monster who did this. That's right, we will. I mean, whoever could have done this was definitely a monster. Are you sure you're okay? Is there someone we can call? Thanks, but, uh, I want to be alone. Okay. Well, we'll go through this alibi with a fine-tooth comb, but you saw is really what happened.
happens. And I know what I saw. Sergeant McCluskey, Mr. Logan. How the hell did you get up here? My sources tell me you were back at the borough's place today. Am I right? Is Kyle a suspect? Look, the media desk is on the second floor. The no comment office. Yeah, you've been there. They know less than I do. Make sure she gets out of here. Well, I'll be right there. How about you, Mr. Logan? Comment? It might be worth your while. Okay, you know what? Ambushing us is not the best way to get what you want. You want to give me a crash course on communicating? How sweet. This is the second time you said you had something for us. What is it? Shoot. Quid pro quo? You know what? If what you have is worth it, maybe. Not exactly starting from a place of mutual trust, are we, Toby? I don't have time for these games. Games? Hey! Whoa. How come you quit being a medic? I didn't. And how come whatever it is you do never gets entered into IAB's evidence against the accused in any trial? This is never any good, okay? While you're reading our cases. I'm doing my research. Want to comment now? I can't tell if you're serious. Can you make sure she gets out of here, please? Thanks anyway. Kyle Burroughs was mid-flight from Newfoundland when Franco was killed. I got five statements to confirm it. Apparently, the offshore drilling boom in the North Atlantic needs wireless solutions, and he's their go-to guy. So his alibi is clear for the whole week. Yeah, he had back-to-back -back meetings. Most of his time was spent on an oil rig. He was really only alone when he slept. I saw him do it. Maybe he thought about it. No. I double-checked for anything to indicate that he could have hired someone to do it. I checked his personal accounts, his business expenses. There was nothing out of order, especially no hitman-sized money going out. Yeah, because he did it himself. Uh, you said yourself, sometimes you read people's intentions. Yeah, not this time. It was too sharp, it was too detailed. He killed her. What about her business partner, Lucy Estevez? Her, her alibi's soft. I mean, she was at home, working, alone. She claims that her and Franco were like sisters, but I'm not sold. But. She did say that she thought that Franca might have had a lover. Maybe she just wants us looking elsewhere. Possibly. I'm checking with her mutual friends and business contacts to see just how real that sister's act is. Oh, as for who Franca fought with at the bistro, I checked the name of the reservation and came up with this. Thomas Zabo. Who's this? Who's Thomas Zabo? He's a local architect. He's got some co-ventures with Franca's firm. He has no criminal record. OK, Dev, you keep digging on Lucy. You and I are going to go talk to this Zabo. OK. Me and Franca? <laughs> Who said that? So you two weren't involved? Professionally. She single-handedly put my work on the map. She was my muse and patron, but not my lover. So, you met outside of work, maybe had dinner last night. She wanted to review the timelines of a new project, yes. How did that go? We argued. She walked out. I warned her this would happen. I should have stayed the hell away from her. You know, you didn't argue about deadlines. You were arguing about your relationship. You were lovers. We got closer during the time we worked together. Last night, I should have kept my mouth shut. I crossed the line and said something. About money? About Kyle. They seem to be having some problems. I was trying to be supportive. I should have walked into a car. But you didn't. I went for a few drinks. I don't know when I got in or how. I know that makes me a suspect, but I would never have hurt her. OK, we'll be in touch. Thank you. His grief for Franca is genuine. I don't get him killing her. Well, they were having an affair. If she told him she wasn't leaving her husband, he could have gone into a rage. He wanted her to leave Kyle. And did I mention that Kyle is a killer? Toby, what's going on with you? All right, this reporter, she said that she has something that we could use. Maybe we should talk to her. What did you get from her? I didn't get anything. I can't read her. You can't read her? You tried? Of course. I mean, she seems sincere, so... Toby, no, that's that's a hook. That's how they get you to talk. Obviously, she doesn't need one for you, though. Oh. Dev says Franca and Lucy had partnership insurance. One dies, the other gets her stake. Franca was worth six million. Huh. Sounds like motive. It's a common thing. Franca's lawyer advised us to get the insurance in case of accidents. Right, like if one of you got murdered. Do I need a lawyer? Because you guys are way off base here. You two are at each other's throats. I already told the other detective it wasn't like that. Maybe you wanted her share of the business so you could run it the way you wanted to. I wanted her to be happy, happy. 
for once in her miserable life. Or maybe you wanted to help her out of a bad spot. And you knew she was miserable. Even little rich girls get abused. Franca grew up as a princess, but Kyle beat that out of her. You're saying that Kyle abused her? She always swore he never hit her. He didn't have to. He broke her in a hundred other ways. So why didn't you say this before? I said Franca cared about her reputation, which was linked to Kyle's. So what, she was embarrassed, ashamed? She made me swear that I wouldn't tell a soul that Kyle was anything but perfect. She didn't want to be pitied. She wanted a way out. An abusive husband killing his cheating wife. Is it starting to sound like a story that you buy? Let's wait for the DNA to get back in from the lab. I know he did it. This is not about the DNA. This is about you guys not trusting what I do. Uh, Toby. So one possibly unreadable girl and I'm unreliable. I need more than a read. I need proof. Yeah, look, I, I could get in trouble for seeing you. You wanted to know why my work at IIB is never in any of the case records, right? Yeah. Okay. Behavioral evidence is easily dismissed in court. What's on record is the results, the hard evidence. That's what sticks. So tit for tat, what do you got on Burroughs? A few months back, I was at this gala on a tax fraud story, and Kyle and Franca were out back after on their own. He was drunk, screaming at her. He slapped her. The cops came. She wouldn't press charges. And there's no record of that with Metro? I checked. Nothing. My editors wouldn't run it out of fear of Kyle, but now I know I should have pressed harder. So that's it? That's what you got? Yeah. OK. So you're saying this incident never took place? Absolutely. I would never hit a woman, let alone Franca. So I have three separate sources told us your marriage was in trouble. You are never here. You don't want to be in this marriage. Listen to me. Just be here when I get back. We had an arrangement. And discretion was key. If she cried on any shoulders about it, it was news to me. Jealous lovers could be potential suspects. We're going to need to talk to them. I was never with anyone for long enough for them to be jealous. As for anyone she may have been with, we never discussed names or details. Well, it was just a lot easier to save your breath and kill her. <laughs> Sergeant, you and your partner are no longer welcome here. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a funeral to arrange. What the hell was that? I saw it again. I saw him lunge at her. Look, you can't just accuse a grieving husband of killing his wife when there's no proof and he has an airtight alibi. He did it. I saw him do it. That's my proof. That's not how it works, Toby. You know that. Okay, so maybe I went at this guy too hard, too quickly, but I know he's guilty. Burroughs has the kind of money that buys friends in high places. I'm sure he was on the phone the minute we walked out the door. All right, so what happens next? Well, now we have to make sure you walk out of this in one piece. Toby, Michelle, my office. What's up? You had an unauthorized conversation with a reporter from the Daily Record today? With Tia, yeah. First name basis. Cozy. 
The papers using the Freedom of Information Act put us under the microscope. I didn't say anything to her, so... Okay, I'm just gonna give you one warning, okay? If you talk to the media again, you're off this case. Yeah, sure. DNA results are back. Yeah, previous offender? No, we can rule out the husband and Lucy Estevez. Leaving us Thomas Sabo or a world of persons unknown. Great, thanks. Oh. Hey, you, how's it going? Hey, uh, well... Pleasant surprise, are you on a case? Uh, no, unofficial, below the radar. What's going on? Well, something's wrong. You know, I've got this read of this husband killing his wife, but... There's no way that he could have done it. And there's this girl. I've been trying to read her. Nothing. Nothing? Yeah. That's new. How are you feeling? <sighs> like I could use a self-diagnostic with someone I trust. Thank you for your cooperation, Mr. Zabo. How long till I'm cleared? Well, we have our lab standing by. You get that I was with her that night? I mean, we hugged, kissed hello. We're only matching samples that she could have acquired while defending herself in an attack. I loved her. I wanted to help her. So she was leaving Kyle? That was the plan. He scared her out of it. You aren't the first to read out so-called private messages. Uh, are you saying that Kyle hacked her phone? Or one of his tech guys, yes. When Kyle found out about us, he, he flipped out. He told her that she uh, needed to end it with me that she needed to be home to greet him when he got back to town, or else. Okay, we're gonna need you to stick around town until we get the results back. If Kyle hacked her smartphone, uh, he could track her movements. He'd know exactly where she was gonna be. Okay, and we're absolutely sure there are no holes in his alibi. Yeah, I dug a little deeper and ran all contracts that his corporation has entered into looking for potential bogus subcontractors. If he made a deal with somebody to kill his wife, I can't find it. All right, your grandmother's middle name? Jeanette. Your biggest regret? Your father? Yeah, missing his funeral. Toby, that's 20 out of 20. You're fine. All right. So it's gotta be the girl. Maybe. But we don't know how it works when it does. We're sure as hell not going to figure it out when it doesn't. I'm open to theories. Um, childhood illness, uh, mental plate in her head. You're the only one who understands it when you experience it. What if I can't anymore? There's that read I got wrong from that guy. Well, maybe that's something else altogether. What do you mean? Maybe it isn't the read itself, but your interpretation of it. Look, it wasn't an imagining or an intention. This was a, a memory, a recollection. I'm sorry, Toby. Short of tracking what's going on, detecting patterns, triggers. Thanks. You're okay, that's what matters. What do you mean you can't? I can't hear her thoughts. I can't see what's inside of her head. Oh, she just smiles and I see nothing. Oh, so you like her? Yeah, right up until she got Klein pissed off at me. Well, I thought the guy who didn't kill his wife got Klein pissed off at you. I don't know, man. I've been trying to figure this thing out my whole life. I finally do, and I got a purpose for it, and uh, it abandons me. Oh, I mean, for those of us who can't read people like an open book, unexpected surprises happen all the time. Right. Does every thought you have solve a case? No. But they still hired you anyway. Look, if I can't trust myself, they can't trust me. Well, Toby, I mean, this ability to read minds that you have is incredible, but the greatest gift is what it's already given you. And you know how to read people. You know people inside and out. This guy, Kyle, man, he wanted his wife dead. He could feel him doing it. He enjoyed it. So trust that. Maybe you don't know how he did it yet, but you know he did it. So stick with it. Get deeper into his head. You in a rush? Something holding you back? When you're down, maybe your conscience. I said I'm done talking to you. I know a lot about you, a lot more than you think. Get out of here. Yeah, I've seen what happens when someone turns their back on you, Kyle. I know you killed her. She was leaving you for someone else, and you couldn't handle that. 
Leave me alone or I will have your badge. Yeah, let me take you back there. You snuck up on her. You concealed your weapon till you're right on top of her. All right, that's enough. She had her back to you. You got this surge of adrenaline. You can't wait. You're insane. You haven't heard the end of this. Leave it on. What's going on? I just received this court order denying our unit further access to Kyle Burroughs. Because we're on to him. Tia Trombley saw Kyle physically hurt, Frank. I was just following up on that. Tia again? Yeah. And you got this from reading her? I can't read her. Can't? What do you mean, can't? You knew about this? This is the first time it happened. Tia is not relevant to our investigation. Keeping secrets and covering for one another's screw-ups absolutely is. This woman is a shark. She's not, and she didn't get anything. She could sink all our careers. In light of the fact that your abilities seem to be malfunctioning, not to mention your judgment, you're off this case and relieved of duty until further notice. Was that really necessary? Well, had to be done. Not like that. He's lucky I only took him off the case, not out of the whole damn unit. Well, without Toby, there isn't a unit. Let me assure you, we are well on our way to that being the situation anyway. Toby confronted Cal Burroughs on his own property without permission. I just spent the last hour on the phone with Superintendent Price putting out that particular fire. But Toby is sure that Burroughs is responsible. Well, with the state of his gift right now, his opinion means nothing. He made a mistake. He's made multiple mistakes. Talking to the press, inaccurate reads, or worse, no reads at all. If we can't trust his ability, then he's a liability, period. What if he's right? You have Logan's back. I get it. This isn't about loyalty. Burroughs' alibi is airtight. His DNA was not a match. I'm aware of all of that, but Toby and his abilities, they've earned my trust, and I'm not going to go back on that because of one or two mistakes in this one case. This one case? The high-profile nature of the victim, we're already under increased scrutiny. I can't have a member of this team, any member, acting outside the chain of command. If he can't play by the rules, I can't protect him. I'll talk to him. Later. We still have a murder to solve, and we're a man short. dangerous man to be around right now. Why is that? Oh, Kyle's lawyers are all after Klein. He's disavowing all responsibility for your actions. Oh, that's a mistake. Going after someone as powerful as Kyle on your own, that is a mistake. Klein's just trying to save the team. What do you think? I think whatever you said must have scared the hell out of Burroughs. Hmm. I thought my read was off, but it wasn't. It was just incomplete, so I went there to get more. And I did. I got a clock. I heard a steam whistle. And I got Kyle cutting a blonde woman's throat with a knife. It wasn't Franca. So two blondes. Uh-huh. Do you have any idea who she was? I don't know, but he killed her. Yeah, they must be connected. What's going on with the DNA? Sabo and Lucy are cleared, but we know that Kyle found out about the affair. He threatened Franca. But he didn't kill her. Someone else did. Whoever Kyle killed is the key to this. Okay, we'll look into it. Good. Which means you won't. The only way we're gonna get you back at the IIB is by nailing Kyle by the book. All right, got it. The ambushes are getting a little old, aren't they? Hold your office. I know what personal leave means. I'm sorry if anything I said got you into trouble. The access of information stuff was my editor, okay? 
He golfs with Kyle Burroughs. He knew I was at the crime scene. He asked me who was working it. I didn't realize he was looking for an angle to come after you or your team. You have no reason to trust me, so maybe I can give you one. You like anything you hear? It's yours. We both know Kyle Burroughs is behind his wife's murder. The thing is, he didn't get his hands dirty. He had someone do it for him. Yeah, well, the evidence does not support that. Rich people meet a lot of desperate people. It's too risky. He chooses the wrong guy, the whole thing blows up in his face. Or it keeps coming back to haunt him. Blackmail, extortion. No, that's a tough role to cast. It requires a type of trust that Kyle cannot give. But the world is his oyster. His personal travel itineraries. Don't ask, just listen. Kyle was in Vancouver three weeks ago. He was booked as the keynote speaker at a tech conference. He bailed the last two days of the conference. Okay, so something came up. The man has never missed a date with the limelight in his life. He fell off the grid for two days. That time could have been spent finding a hitman to kill his wife. Buying a birthday gift. Maybe he met a woman. Another reason to check out Vancouver. If he goes with a non-local hitman, it would make it harder to trace a connection back to him. What have you got, Logan? I don't know. I don't know. But if I get something, then I promise you, you'll get the exclusive. Thank you, Tia. This isn't enough. Yeah. Kyle killed that woman in Vancouver about three weeks ago near that antique steam clock in Gastown. Toby, I told you to stay away from him. No, this is from Tia, who did not come after us. It was her editor, who was a friend of Kyle's. From Tia. Toby. Look, can you just look into it? If she's pulling something, we'll both know. I can't tell on my own. It just goes along with what I've got from Kyle. OK, I'll have Deb look into it. Look, uh, client's out for a few hours on some depositions. I checked Kyle's travel itinerary against recent homicides in Vancouver. There were four. But only one of them in Gastown that matched the hours that Kyle vanished that day. Hey, this is the girl that Kyle killed. Bridget Lind, cause of death. Her throat was slit. Bridget Lind. She's a retail buyer, married, no kids. She declared personal bankruptcy twice. So what's the connection to Kyle? Maybe one of his lovers? Uh, maybe I checked his client list and uh, business contacts and competitors. I haven't found a connection yet. Well, how about family connections? Well, her husband, Stephen Lind, is a publisher. Another Toronto boy who made it big. Try connecting Kyle and Lind, see if there's any recent contact. Yeah, there's lots of connections here. They went to the same university, Blake. They graduated the same year. They were even in the same frat together. They graduated 10 years ago. Check for a class reunion. What are you thinking? Have you ever seen this old Hitchcock film, Strangers on a Train? Crisscross. So we know that Kyle Burroughs and Stephen Lind reconnected at their fraternity reunion. They agree to swap murders. Their lives aren't connected to the victims, so they'll never get caught. It's a long shot, Michelle. The reunion could have been sheer coincidence. And what's Stephen Lynn's motive? I mean, is there any evidence that he also wanted his wife dead? Bridget Lynn told her book club that he hit her and repeatedly threatened her life. So he's suspect number one. Airtight alibi, exact same elements as Kyle's. Both were traveling, both have witnesses for every waking hour. So maybe a little more than just coincidence. All of this came from Toby. You're saying we need him? I'll work the back channels, get them reinstated. You get them back on the case as soon as possible. I don't know. He's supposed to be resting. I don't want to bother him. Don't be nervous. He wants to meet you. He asked me twice. Just go. OK, OK. Come in. Hey, Glenn. It's, uh, it's Oz. Brought you in. How you doing? You feeling good? You comfortable? I am now, thanks to you. I want to thank you for saving my life. It's it's a good handshake you got there. Hey, I I've got something for you. Oh, we're not we're not allowed to accept gifts. I was just doing my job. You know that would be unethical, so I, I can't really. Uh... Oz, these are VIP 50 yard line seats to the 100th Grey Cup Championship, and I want you to have them. I'm actually applying for management right now, so I really I I got to set a good example for the guy. I hear you. Leadership's important. It is in football, too. But the guys think you're nuts. You don't take these. Yeah, I got a friend who's probably never going to want to talk to me again. But I, um, maybe I could just see them. Can you just, just crack that? No, you know what? It, it's fine. Thank you. Thank you, but I will pass. Uh, hang on. Hang on a second. 
Maybe there's a way we can still work this out. Oh, look who's back officially. Ooh, got a yeah. key card. All right, very cute, very cute. So what do we got? Uh, well, Stephen Lind is supposed to be in Montremblant, a literary retreat all week long. But he isn't. No. According to his rental car's anti-theft system, he's been in Toronto for the past two days. Killing Frank Burroughs. And there's no record the car was stolen? No. So I have an OPP unit tailing him as we speak. Where? Looks like he's headed eastbound on Highway 401 towards the Don Valley Parkway Junction. Yeah, he's heading back to his alibi in Montremblant. Well, let's keep eyes on him. Dev, can you hack into Kyle's phone? Yeah, he's cake. How could you be this stupid? What the hell are you doing here? What the hell are you doing texting me? I was on my way out of here. I was free and clear. We said no contact. What are you thinking? I didn't send you this. So this is what? Set up. Dude, do not flake out on me now. Well, something's going on. Somebody put us together. Somebody knows. Calm down. Let me think about this. You caved, didn't you? I knew that I couldn't trust you. Would you sell me out for a deal? Nobody has anything on me, you idiot. You must have done something. We need more. Are you wearing a wire? Why would I be wearing a wire? I have more to lose than you do. You are pulling something. But I am not going down for a double murder alone. This was your idea. I didn't even think you were serious until you cut my wife's throat and left her lying in the garbage. <laughs> Freeze, IMB! Don't move! Give it to me. Let's go. Get down. Give me your hands. We're clear. That's right. Crisscross, just like in the movie. Thank you. It was a team effort. I can't give away all our secrets, Jeremy. I just hope that your trust is restored and that my budget is fully approved. <laughs> we'll talk. All right. Logan. Yeah. Hey, so I guess you're out of the doghouse with Price. Well, he's just shocked and amazed that we once again solved the unsolvable crime. Well, I gotta say, half of that was Kyle's arrogance. It was more than that. I need to give credit where credit is due. After a shaky start, you really came through for us. I'm glad to have you back. Well, thanks. Apology accepted. Oh, no, don't mistake that for an apology. I was well within my rights to remove you from the investigation, and I will not hesitate to do it again if you ever break protocol like you did today. I will keep that in mind. Please do. And in turn, I will try to better understand how your process works. Maybe I can give you a little more leeway in that department in the future. Uh, you know what? I would appreciate that. I'll see you tomorrow. Bright and early. Sounds good. The very first Grey Cup game was played at Rosedale Field in Toronto in 1909. And since then, this legendary symbol hey. of Canadian unity through sports... What are you doing here? This, my friend, is your lucky day. It's not my birthday. You know, you know, lucky's not even the right word. Blessed. Cool. What do I do? Uh, would you just open it, please, okay. before I explode? Whoa! No! You're kidding me? Huh? Are these real? Yup. How'd you get them? And on a personal note, I want to say thank you to Oz Bay for coming to my rescue. No! Oz, Are you kidding me? Glenn Suter's life, my your friend. Name. And he gave you oh, those tickets man, to take famous. me to Grey Cup 100. Nice. Good work. Yep. Well, I, uh, oh, hey, I'm going to probably not take you, actually. It's okay, right? This is, uh, is this, um... Uh... This is you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Are you kidding me? It's a great cup 100, man, me and you. All the way. It's nice, nice, right? Tia. This is Oz. Oh, Oz, this is oh. Tia. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. She's a reporter. Nice. Yeah. This just in. I gotta go. Right? Okay. <laughs> Glad you could come. Well, thanks for the exclusive. Well, it was authorized and everything. Thank you for your help. You wanna sit down? Oh, well, I didn't come to stand. Good. That's right. So, um, is this off the record? The celebrations are strictly me time. Okay. I've got to take your word for that. 
You want a drink? Sure. Good. I am going to have to ask you what you want. What would you like to drink? Something fruity. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> 